Hi everyone, welcome to Bookstackers. It's been a while. Mm. We've been busy <laughs> and we kept forgetting to film. But we're here now. <laughs> it's so the weekend. It's December now. In case you couldn't tell. We have already decorated for Christmas. So I guess the next couple of videos are just gonna have to be Christmassy. No. What a shame. Today we're doing our in-depth discussion of Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. We finished this like two weeks ago. You finished it way before then because yeah. you'd already read it. Did it take you a long time to get into it or were you like interested when you started reading it? I thought at first that it was going to be one of those books that it was going to take me a while to get into because it was this new world and there are all these new characters and very early on you realize that they're switching point of views. Like a lot of the time it's quite confusing. Yeah. But this book, just the characters from the get-go were so fully fledged and it wasn't like oh this is my backstory and da 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 okay we're here it was kind of like you were fed little bits of information as it went through the book and so it really felt like you were kind of getting to know them through their interactions with people which i found awesome it really reminds me of the raven cycle in that way like the way it switches uh point of view and how you get to know the characters and mm. i did find this a bit darker just because all the characters <laughs> were kind of a little dark. yeah like, but all the characters were so flawed and i loved it none but of like, them are particularly good people no they're not they're like not... good people mm. but they kind of come together for this mission that they have and it's really interesting to see like the dynamic of power that's there and how it sort of shifts very subtly as well like obviously you've got Kaz who's the leader but there's also some other power plays that are going on within that and how people don't know exactly where they stand with Kaz and Kaz also kind of has his things where he wants to impress people but he doesn't want them to know he wants to impress them he can't he can't tell them that and it, I just really enjoyed that even though there were a bunch of kind of characters that you're following and that you get to see their perspectives it didn't feel like it was too much it, it felt very cinematic is how I would describe it they left it on a cliffhanger for each chapter like there was a different cliffhanger for each person and you would find some new bit of information but then you were like wait now I have so many more questions and so often like Kaz would have discovered something he's like I know what I'm gonna do and then suddenly Inej would be like so Kaz has ordered us in for a meeting I'm like ooh. Mm. Oh, we're not going to find out what Kaz has just, like, yeah. worked out yet. But it was still kind of on that similar yeah. track, which yeah. I think was good. Because a lot of the time, if you're jumping too far back and forth in time, it gets so confusing. Yeah, and you're sort of trying to figure out what's happening when and who's involved. Yeah. And it's got, like, the whole world that's already built because mm. uh, she has another series of books, like, in the same universe. Um, which which I, I haven't read. read. Yeah. So... <laughs> You don't need to read that series to read this one. Yeah. Like, I, I knew nothing about that other series yeah. until after I'd finished it's this. It's still, like, explained as it goes on. So you, you learn about the universe as it goes. So there's no issue with, like, being confused about what's happening. They explain, like, uh, the different nations that everybody's from. Like, Nina's from Ravka. Uh, Matthias is from Fjorda. Fjorda? Fjorda. I don't know. There was a J after the F. I'm pretty sure it's Fjorda. <laughs> because I'm assuming they're based off like Norse yeah, yeah. sort of people. <laughs> I'm really bad with names. <laughs> like really bad with names. And yet, so even weird. though these were super weird names, I was like, oh yeah, cause I remember this character is this. And I think it was just because they were so strong and each had their own place in the group and each had their own really strong mm. personality and connections. So yeah. you weren't getting confused between two characters, which often happens in like a lot of oh, contemporary yeah. novels I read. There'll be like a group of five and I'm like, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> there are so many people. I'm confused. Whereas this, like, you knew exactly who was doing what. Like they I can all think back. Very and... distinct people. They had mm. their own personalities and they had their own things that they were dealing with. I really liked how they worked as a group though. They didn't necessarily really like each other. I mean no, most of them like each other, but none of them really liked Kaz. <laughs> they had this, like, respect. Yeah, almost. they had a respect for each other. Mm. Mostly, except between Kaz and Matthias. Yeah. I just, I really enjoyed, like, the stakes. The stakes always felt very high. Oh, yeah, like, the whole cool. way through this, they were, like, in some sort of trouble. Like, it starts with, like, a meeting, and they're being shot at, and then there's, like, a betrayal from somebody in their group, and Kaz just deals with it. He's like... Whatever. And then they're like, uh, the heist is suggested to them, and 
Kaz is like, yes, I want this money, thank you. And then they're on the heist and they're making the plans and they have to kidnap this guy. Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's the just whole constantly time through, there's like something else that they have to do and it's important to the story. Um, what would you say the themes were? The theme of loyalty, I would say, like Nina, I think is probably like the best example because she's got her loyalty to Ravka. She's got her debt, which is a form of loyalty, I guess, with Kaz. And then she's got this, I guess loyalty, but also kind of debt with Matthias and how she got him stuck in prison. Yeah. And she was like, that was a mistake. I guess it's all sort of like loyalty and sense of duty yeah. Um, and how that loyalty can be severed or how strong that is. Yeah. It kind of pushes people to their limits, this story. Yeah. Like, it sort of sees, okay, what would you be willing to sacrifice to get money? What would you be really willing to sacrifice to feel, you know, religiously sound or whatever their motivations are? And I found that especially interesting, especially, like, the relationship between Inej and Kaz. Like, they clearly both have the hearts for each other. <laughs> Clearly. But neither of them are willing to sacrifice what they have for that relationship. It was interesting. It's like, okay, we like each other, but like our circumstances, I'm not willing to sacrifice my life. You're not willing to sacrifice your role as the leader, sort of stuff like that. And it was yeah, interesting. Um, because Kaz uh, had his own thing. He was like, I don't want to do this. Feelings are bad. Uh, I feel like that's mainly his internal monologue through the whole thing. Like, feelings yeah, are bad. Yeah. But, um, He just wants to keep that control and power, and I feel yeah. like, for him, emotions will interfere with that. I mean, to be fair, once you read his backstory, I'm like, yeah. fair enough, you sweet child. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, because, and Inej is also pretty hesitant about it, because she doesn't like the way that he's so... I guess callous about stuff and how he's so uncaring because like there are moments in this where she's like hoping that he'll say like oh stay Inej I want you to stay you know yeah and he doesn't she's always sort of like oh, f but also it makes sense that he doesn't like oh, if he yeah. suddenly turned around and was like I love you I'd be like if you're pushing this relationship mm. and I think that was one of the great things about Lee Vardugo is that everything felt really real like, it felt like, yeah, that's what a character would do in that situation. When they're pushed to that limit, this would happen. Yeah. None of it felt kind of staged just for the sake of it. It kind yeah. of felt like the characters were really driving the story. And, and it's great because this is one of those stories that's a real mix between plot and character. Because the characters are all going through stuff that the plot kind of drives, but then things that the character do... Char yeah, because the characters, characters are, do. the characters are driven by their own plots. And that, in turn, drives the plot of the book. Yeah. So And it evolves, and it, yeah, it's very beautifully written, and it's very clever how it's done, just in that aspect that, you know, all the characters evolve throughout it, and if you think back to the beginning compared to the end, I feel like some decisions that were made would be different by those characters, like they're suddenly very different, even though the change is really subtle, yeah. it's not just like, oh, suddenly Kaz would do this instead of this, oh, suddenly Inej would do this, it's like, oh... Like, I didn't even realise that change had happened, but thinking back, it's yeah. like, they've grown and they've matured. And, yeah, like, yeah. the way Matthias, I think, probably had one of the biggest struggles in this, because when they went Fiora, and he started thinking about the way they were treating the Grisha, and he was like, maybe it's not right after all, and his, like, old commander was ready to kill him, and he's like, but we're, like, brothers, you know, that's the whole yeah. thing. Like, they had a real brotherhood thing going on. Did you find a real connection between, kind of, like, the Nazi sort of regime with that. Like, I know, obviously, because he thought that he was doing the right thing, yeah. eradicating, but I found it it was really interesting that parallel to yeah. sort of Nazis thinking that Jews were horrible and we must get rid of them and eradicate. And there would have been some people in there who were just doing it because they had to. But then you think to Matthias, and he genuinely thought that that was what you had to do. And That's be because he'd been brought up that way. That's what yeah. they were taught. They were taught that they were like abominations oh, in the eyes. And I, of I, like, I got chills when, when Nina kind of confronted him. and was When like, she was like so distraught about yeah. it. She was like, this is what your people are doing to my And people. how in her perspective, this guy that Matthias saw as this father figure was like horrible, was like the yeah. boogeyman to her, like terrifying. Yeah. And... You know, Matthias kind of saw this humanized side because he was on the different side of the war. Yeah. And especially when he realized... The way he was, like, confronted with yeah. the two differing perspectives and he was suddenly like, maybe everything I've thought through my whole life 
isn't right. Yeah. And it was sort of interesting to go, okay, look, if you've grown up being told that this is wrong and this is right your whole life, it's understandable why you're confused. And so then when he was kind of given the chance to make his own decision, once given all the facts, it was really cool that he was like, no, you're right. That's wrong. I mean, I'm still like uncomfortable about this whole thing, but we shouldn't be treating you like this yeah. because clearly you have feelings. It, it takes him a while to admit it, yeah. um, which I think is kind of fair coming yeah. from like somebody who'd be so conflicted about it. But yeah. he recognizes the fact that it is inhumane yeah. and he recognizes that maybe he was in the wrong. Yeah. So and I you, think you couldn't just hate anyone because yeah, it made sense the way they were. It, it was just the way they were brought up. Like it was nature versus, versus nurture. Yeah, like, like the way the way Kaz made some decisions, like I didn't agree with, and the way he was willing to like, um, like kill people or like to get what he wanted. Yeah, I was like, I don't like that you're willing to do this. I un- I kind of understand where you're coming from, but I don't like that you're willing to do this. But I still like you, and you kind of almost felt that empathy because you're like. Oh. Like, you're in a real tough spot, eh? (laughs) He's 17. I was like... Oh, God. Every time I remembered how young they were, I was like, children, please. Yeah, I was like... (laughs) Someone needs to tuck you into bed still, man. Someone needs to just, like, pat your head. I really enjoyed that even though the characters themselves are quite young, because what they were dealing with was quite adult, it sort of elevated it up. So it didn't feel... Like you were reading about 17 year olds having all their drama in high school. It was like, no, no, no. This is genuine, like, hardship that they're going through. There are definitely characters in this who, like, had done bad things, were bad people, were in bad shit. And you were like, well, yeah. But then there were others that kind of had been given that circumstance thrust upon them. Like the bits. Right, with Wylan mm. and his dad. When you realise that Wylan can't read and his dad thinks he's, like, worthless because of that, because he can't help in the business. Wylan, oh. you poor child. Yeah. My God. The whole time I was like, oh, the dad's, like, sending him letters. Like, Wylan's just, well, what's oh. the reason? And when then you find out he can't read and that was mocking him, I was like... And like, <laughs> oh, that realisation. I was like, I fucking hate this dude so much. Yeah. Wylan is so sweet. Yeah. And I was also, like, I had this, like, new respect for Wyland for, like, getting out of that situation. Like, even though, yeah, he He's, was in a dangerous he spot. He believed for ages that maybe he could get his dad to respect him. And that was, like, heartbreaking. Because mm. the fact that, like, he went through all this and then his dad was willing to just, like, abandon him or, like, let him die. He was fine with that. And I was so upset for this Poor child. I also love, like, that when Wyland came into that dynamic, like, no one really trusted him because he was from a different class and stuff, and he kind of had to prove himself. And I love that he did, and that, like, you had Jesper kind of, like, at the beginning really hating on him genuinely, <laughs> and then kind of coming to whole, like, begrudgingly, like, oh, I guess I'm being paired with you, I guess I'll show you the ropes, to them being like, I actually kind of like this guy. <laughs> Maybe you don't like, like, like this, this guy. guy. <laughs> I was like, yes. Honestly, Jesper and Nina, amazing. Mm. Like, uh, we've talked about, like, the serious shit in this book, and there's plenty of that, but, like, there's always humour through it as well. Yeah. There's always, like, really darkly funny bits, or even yeah. just genuinely funny parts. There's a lot of, like, dark humour in here, because these, these people have gone through some shit, but they're willing to make jokes. Like, Jesper makes jokes all the time. And Nina is such a sassy character. <laughs> like, some of the things she says, I'm like, damn, girl, you burnt him. And it's just so funny, and I loved, as well, one of the things I loved about Nina was how body confident she was. Right? Like, she's described as being, like, curvy and, yeah. like, kind of chubby. And she's, like, constantly eating. And she's, like, always really happy to be eating. And I'm like, I relate so hard. Yeah. Thank and you. I just I just love that, like, that made her beautiful as well. Because she was just like, oh, you see something you like? Like, awesome. And she was just so, like, happy in her body, which I loved. She wasn't a prostitute. Uh, she used her um, powers. Heart rending. Yeah. Heart render, right? Yeah, yeah she's heart, heart render. She used her abilities to like um, help people. Yeah. Which I think was adorable. But, yeah. But I think as well, like, she so could have easily kind of in those situations that she was in, like, she was captured and she was taken away from her family and the people she knew and away from her country. Like, she could have easily been like a wisp of a woman. But I love that in that situation, she came above it and she thrived because she knew she had to survive. 
and she had that goal to, you know, yeah. make good on what she had done. Like, yeah. she realised her mistake and wanted to make better of it. And I felt so sad when she first rescued Matthias, and he was so, like, broken by prison. And I was like, oh, honey. Yeah. <laughs> like, when he had to murder the wolf, and she saw that, and she was, like, so upset for him because she knew what that meant to him, I was yeah. like... I mean, like, this is kind of your fault. And, it, yeah. Like, so I understand that you need to feel this pain, but I'm also sad that you're feeling it. <laughs> I was like, no. Because she's such a sweetheart, and she really is, like, super caring throughout the whole thing. And I loved the friendship between her and Inej, because yeah. they're the girls, right? So, they're, like, they try and stick together. Yeah. And at the end, when Nina's had the uh, Jota Param, mm. and she's, like, going through the withdrawal and everything, and Inej is, like, sitting with her, and I thought that was adorable. Yeah. The whole bit with Nina, um, when she took the Joie de Perum or however Jota. you said, Jota. I don't uh, know how Jota to say Perum, it. that's how I've been saying when it. She, when she took that drug uh, at the end um, and Jesper kind of reflected and was like, I wouldn't have done it. Like, I just, I don't think I could have done that. It was interesting to see that Nina's like core values and her integrity and everything was so strong that she was willing to make that sacrifice for the betterment of everyone. And also because she was aware that, you know, if they failed, then the whole world could be in jeopardy. Yeah, because they couldn't let that get out. And she knew like the ramifications of what would happen if it happened to get out and be like produced. Yeah. But I found it so interesting that she held her life. She was like, I'm willing to sacrifice my life. For the greater good. And Whereas I, Jesper was like, honestly, yeah. I couldn't have done that. And it, I liked that honesty. It makes sense. I mean, yeah, Jesper's honesty, amazing. Yeah. But it makes sense from Mina's backstory because she was a soldier. Yeah. So it makes sense that she'd be willing to sacrifice yeah. herself for the greater good. Yeah. Whereas if Jesper had done it, I wouldn't have believed it. You know, like he, he's great and he's a lovely guy. And I'm sure like he sacrificed other things. And he is very loyal to his friends. Sure. But I don't think he would have done that no. for everyone else. I think. Just because of the way he's been treated by the world, I feel like he would have been like, well, too bad, so sad. Plus for him, he has a lot of motivation of like uh, trying to stay for his dad, which comes up more in the second book. But um... He still has this thing that he needs to complete for himself. I think like his story was not completed in that, whereas yeah. like Nina had, you know, she'd done her time, she'd saved Matthias, which is what she set out to do. Her next goal was then to kind of make sure that this drug did not get to other yeah. people like and herself. And she obviously eventually wants to get back to Ravka, and she wants to help her country with the war that's going yeah. on. And, but for her, that was the best move she could have, yeah. make, she could have made in yeah. that time. And I also, I, I did really enjoy, like, even though we're got kind of going back, but I really enjoyed Inej's decision not to stay with Kaz. And just the fact that when she found what she wanted to do with that money, when she, like, realised it, because at first she was just kind of doing whatever, but when she found that passion, suddenly she switched and was like, yep, I've got a mission, I'm now here fully invested. And it was just really cool to see that switch of, like, oh, she was just doing this, you know, for Kaz, her friend, her partner, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then suddenly she's like, no, I'm doing this for me now as well. I liked that a lot. liked that a lot. Spice. (laughs) (laughs) I would say for this book, I liked the differences in the characters, but also how they came together. Like, just the sort of, like, motley group Mm. where, like, they don't, like, they they don't really match, I guess. I mean, I think if anybody matches, it's Nina and Jesper because they're just both so, like, um, ready to crack jokes and Mm. stuff. Uh, But... I like how they eventually come together and how the experiences through the book force them to do that sort of and they build that sort of mutual respect further. God, this book, I just, I don't know what it was about this, but it was just one of the few immersive books that I've read in a while. Like there are a lot of books that I read that I really enjoy that I love and I think the world's really cool and awesome and stuff, but I sort of feel like I can put it down and it's been a while since I've had a book that I'm like, I need to keep reading this. Like, I need to finish this. And every time I would start reading, like, it would take me a few sentences and I'd be back in that world because, like, the descriptions were just so, like, Mm. poignant. They were really, like, succinct, if that makes sense. Like, it wasn't kind of a lot of faff. It didn't feel like stalling, but every single chapter felt like it was there for a purpose. And every single, like, sentence felt like it was there for a purpose. Like, it didn't feel like there was a lot of, like, stalling to get through the book. The time uh, she spends on world building doesn't feel like wasted time. Yeah. 
It feels like, and she always adds something else into the world building. So it'll be like, you know, Kaz's first coming to and what he experienced there and then suddenly the shift and how the whole glamour gets broken. And I was like, that is such a good, like, analogy to, like, describe it because now I'm just seeing it so vividly. I'm like, oh, yeah. It sort of shatters any pretense you have of it being really nice. They're like, no, no, it's a shithole. Like, (laughs) and it's hard. It's like, and the describing of, like, how... Like when Kaz just pulls out the guy's eyeball, like with, without a second thought, he's just, it's just like, yep, yeah, that happened. You're like, okay. And it sort of made it go, yeah, cool. This is like a serious book with like serious things. You've got funny characters having like quips and stuff, but like at its core, it's kind of like, there's a serious issue here. And even though they're kind of in it for the money, they're also sort of actually doing good for the world which is really interesting because only some of them are trying to do good well i mean yeah i think matthias and nina are trying to do good in a broader sense yeah in the a others sense. are kind of like doing good for themselves which fair enough whatever. yeah i also loved like the betrayal that i thought had happened like when matthias kind of like came in and like mm. i was like I was like, no, 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 mm. no, no. And I, I, right. like, I looked at how much was left of the book and I'm like, how the fuck, how are they getting out of this? I was like, oh my God. And like yeah. when the shoes were burning, like so much went wrong oh. in the plan and it felt like they were scrambling. Like it really, yeah. like my heart was racing. It so I really liked like that. a scramble. Yeah. I this. really liked that. It was, it was really cool because it was just like, I was there going like, holy crap. How are they <laughs> get out of this? Like literally, how is this going to work Like out? there are sometimes books where something bad will happen and you're like, surely they'll fix it sure but in this i was like there are so many main characters like because there wasn't like a main main character i'm sorry i'm spitting i'm getting excited but like (laughs) there are so many main characters i was like realistically you could kill a couple off you could kill a couple off and leave one standing at the end and you know you still technically have the story you can still technically do the sequel yeah i knew there was a second book but i didn't know anything about it exactly i I mean you could introduce new characters whatever was there anything like you disliked no i don't think there's anything this that i particularly disliked some like obviously i don't like some of the decisions they make but that's that's, like part of the yeah that's part of the character and who they are so god if i had to pick like a bit that i didn't like as much I think the bit that I probably disliked see I'm gonna say dislike because I didn't like hate it and I don't mind that it's there but it was more the bits where um Inej and Kaz would kind of be alone in the alleyway and they would kind of have uh their conversations and Kaz would kind of say some stuff that I was like because you can't you can't say that to her yeah you can't like it was it, and it like those sort of bits felt very awkward and I know that that was like definitely the characters and I totally see how that like built them up later on but there were definitely those moments where I was sort of like I don't like that this feels awkward (laughs) yeah because (laughs) it's like it makes sense for the characters though because that's like how they'd be but it definitely like slowed down the pace for those moments which like was great in the way that I saw that the author was definitely trying to like you know, make like portray that these two are kind of have a standoffish thing. They're not necessarily telling each other truly how they feel, but they want to be around each other. And so I got that. Yeah. But I, it still made like, me feel uncomfortable. You like know? the fact that she was, they were in character the whole time. Nothing they did ever felt like something that yeah. they wouldn't do. Yeah. So, so I just, I just disliked that as a reader just because it made me yeah. feel uncomfortable, but I understood why it was there. So I wouldn't necessarily say I want that taken out. If yeah. that makes sense. Like, yeah. I think it still needs to be there. But if I was pinpointing a bit that I didn't like, it was those bits. Because I was like, ah, just tell each other how you feel, man. Just like, it's, just do it. Expression is good and healthy. <laughs> would you recommend this book? I would absolutely recommend this book. Yeah. So many people recommend this book. Yeah. Like, I, just, I tried, like, explaining this to my boyfriend. I was like, yeah, and it's, like, some people have powers and some people don't. And then there's, like, this group, and they're really cool. But they're 17, but they're really cool. And I was to like, fair, it sounds to so... To be fair, it's because you explained it exactly like that. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> like, read the blurb if you, like, don't listen to my description. Because, like, it's so much better than I can describe it. And there's so much to it that you can't really boil yeah. it down to a little paragraph. There's just a lot in this book. Like, it feels like just one big thing, because, like, the heist is, like, the biggest part of it. Yeah. But there's so much that, like, little bits that go into it. Rating? Well, I, I give this five gunny boys. Five gunny boys. Because they're five. criminals. Five out of five. Just because it's, like, it's such a good book, and I just want everyone to read it. 
There's and like I can't think of anything I disliked enough yeah, to be like not recommend it. Yeah, it's fantastic writing and if you love action or historical fiction or anything like that. Oh your probs. It's just love so it. good. If you haven't already, check out our spoiler for review. We pick out the next book that we're gonna be reading over there. But that book review will be up in January and we're probably gonna do a couple more Christmassy themed videos on here before then. So keep an eye out for those. We hope you have a happy holidays if you don't watch any more of our videos before Christmas. And uh, yeah. Bye! Bye.